Hello everyone, this is Lindsay from WindingRoadCrochet.com and today I'm going to be showing you a system that I use in order to keep my yarn stash tangle free. If you like this tutorial, please make sure you subscribe and hit the like button for more tips, tutorials, and crochet stitches. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a skein saver to keep your yarn ends in check, how to use your skein saver and how to put them onto your yarn, I'm going to show you what information you need to record and keep on hand for each ball of yarn you have. I will show you how to calculate how much yarn you have left in each ball of yarn and how to track your yarn stash so you know what you have on hand without digging through your yarn. So here's a scene you're probably familiar with. You probably have a number of skeins of yarn that are in a little bit more rough shape. Their ends are kind of loose. They've been used a bit, the centers have been pulled out, and we need to find a very secure way of securing our ends and storing these balls of yarn. And that is where our skein savers come into handy. So let me show you my balls of yarn with the skein savers. These are what I'm calling skein savers. They are basically a more elastic type band that is going around the edge of all the balls and they are securing the ends in place. These will replace those paper bands that no longer fit once you start using the balls. And the great thing about this is as you start pulling from the center, this is going to tighten up and continue to hold everything in place. Great thing too is the way we are using this, we are going to have a whole bunch of cute little patterns and it just really makes your yarn nice and cute as well as very easy to store without it becoming all tangled up. So let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need to make these skein savers. The first thing we're gonna need is a pair of scissors and then the next thing we're gonna need is a whole bunch of socks. And I just went to my local dollar store, 99 cent store, and got some socks with some really cute patterns on them. You can use, of course, socks you already have at home that maybe are missing a pair or has the heel worn out of them. That would work really well. Recycling socks is always a really great option for this. That way you're not throwing them away. But I just went ahead and picked up some really cute designs. I looked for socks that are mostly long. I picked up some men socks, some Valentine's Day socks. I really like the fox socks. So these are gonna give everything a really cute design and just make our yarn nice and cute. So when buying socks, you definitely wanna get the largest size you can find. You also wanna find long socks. The longer the sock, it's gonna be easier to make skein savers for those really long type of skeins that you can find. Also, you can use them and cut them down so they're smaller for like little cake yarns and smaller skeins of yarn. It's also good to get men socks. These avocado socks are actually men socks and you can see how the men socks are wider. And so that will be nicer for the thicker yarn cakes and thicker skeins of yarn. But since these aren't quite as long, we are only gonna be able to get two skein savers out of the men socks that I have. You'll also be able to find a little bit thinner socks, um, not quite as long. And again, socks like this, you're only going to be able to get two skein savers out of the smaller socks. When the longer socks, you could probably get three skein savers or a skein saver for the longer style of skeins. So let me go ahead and show you how I'm going to make this skein saver. So I'll just take my scissors and I'm going to cut off the toe high up as you can. And then we're going to cut off the heel right down that seam. All right. And then you can see that's a little bit angled and if you're a perfectionist, feel free to go ahead and cut off that angle, keep it nice and straight up top. And there you go, you're all done and your first small skein saver is finished. Now on the other side, I'm going to cut off the other part of the heel. Told you this is going to be quick. Get that out of the way. And then we are going to take off this band here because this band is not quite as stretchy as the rest of the sock and we really do need this to have a lot of stretch. So we'll cut that off. 
And now we have a long style skein saver. So we have two made from one sock, or if you'd like, you could cut this one in half and make three skein savers from one sock. If you're buying this pairs of socks for about a dollar, that means you're getting a skein saver for around 25 cents to 17 cents, depending on how you cut it up. So it really ends up being a really good bang for your buck. So let me grab these and show you how we are going to put this on a ball of yarn. So here I have a ball of yarn and my skein saver that I just made. I'm going to bunch this around my wrist, grab the end of the ball of yarn, and then just gently wedge it onto the yarn. And then once it's into the center of the yarn, that's when I'm going to go ahead and start spreading it out so that it covers up all the yarn ends and all those extra loops. We want all of those to be tight and secure against the ball of yarn. All right, and once it's all spread out, then I'm gonna go ahead, because I like to make everything look nice and neat, I'm gonna go ahead and start tucking in the raw edge. It just makes your skein of yarn look a little bit neater and a little bit cleaner looking. Once all the raw edges are tucked in, I'm just going to go along the edge and make sure all the ends are tucked in because the whole point of this is to secure those ends. See the end there? We're just going to tuck it behind the band so everything is secure. And as you start pulling from this, this band is going to tighten up around our ball of yarn and keep everything nice and neat. So here I have a small cake of yarn that I'm going to put a skein saver around. And I have a piece of the men's avocado sock. I'm just going to put this around my wrist, grab the bottom of the cake of yarn, and start working this on it. And for this one, I'm going to move it all the way up to the top because there's a lot of loops on the side of a cake of yarn that we definitely don't want to come loose or get tangled up. So pull that all the way to the top, leave the bottom a little loose, that's not a problem. And then just along the top, I'm going to tuck in the edges again. And there you have your cake of yarn all ready to be stored away. And it'll sit nice and flat or you can put it on its side on a shelf with all the yarn ends tucked in. The last skein of yarn we are going to be doing is one of these nice big long skeins. These things get really tangled up once you pull the, the guts out of them. Um, so that's why we have these nice long skein savers for them just to hold everything in place. Again, I'm gonna put the whole thing bunched up around my wrist grab one end of the skein and work the entire thing all bunched up into the center of the skein. Once it's there, then we can go ahead and start spreading it out. And with this, again, we wanna cover the entire skein because these kinds of skeins are just really terrible about getting tangled up. And then once again, I'm just gonna tuck in all the loose ends and these raw edges. I just love the pandas on this one. So cute. And there you go, all maintained. Now that we have all our balls of yarn with their little skein savers on them to keep the ends in check, we do have a problem here. We don't have all the information that we need for our skeins of yarn. We don't know what colors, what type of yarn they are. So it's gonna be really important for us to record that information. So what I recommend is taking a piece of cardstock and just writing down all the information you're going to need and tucking them under the skein saver so that you have all that information right where you need it. Or if you click on the link in the description box below, you can become a newsletter subscriber and get access to my principal resources where you can find these yarn stash tags that you can fill out for each skein of yarn so you have all the information you need. You would just fill out this little tag and then stuff it underneath the yarn skein saver and everything will be right there whenever you pull out that piece of yarn. You're going to want to make sure you record the brand of yarn that you have and the type of yarn. So for example, this orange skein up here I know is Red Heart with Love. I'd have to look up what color it is. I don't have the dye lot because I no longer have the paper band, but I do know it's 100% acrylic for the fiber. Now for the yardage up here, I'm going to show you how to calculate that in just a moment. 
but it's also good to know the recommended hook size and the recommended needle size as well as the care information just so you don't have to look it up at a later date. So to figure out how many yards of yarn we still have left over, you are going to need a scale that can measure the weight of the yarn in ounces. Or you could use grams, but we we're going to do ounces for today. I've already measured this skein of yarn here. When you measure it, you're going to want to make sure that the yarn saver is not on it. But since I measured it, we'll get that out of the way. It's good to have the band of yarn, otherwise you will have to look up the information online. This is obviously a different type of yarn, but I just wanted to show you that you can find all the information, the care instructions, the weight of the yarn, the recommended hook and needles all on the band. But what we are going to need to figure out the yardage is the original weight of the yarn and the original amount of yards that was in the skein of yarn. So to figure out how much yards we still have left, we're going to have to figure out how many yards per ounce for that type of weight. And to do that, we'll need the original yardage divided by the original weight of the yarn, and that will give us our yards per ounce. Once we find out the yards per ounce, we'll just times that by the remaining weight that we have in our current skein, and that will give us the remaining yardage. So let's go ahead and figure out for this orange ball of yarn here. I know there is 370 yards in a seven ounce ball of Red Heart with Love. So I take 370 divided by seven to get 52.85 yards per ounce. Now I've already weighed this ball of orange yarn and I know that there are three ounces remaining. So I take the 52.85, which is my yards per ounce, times that by three to get an estimation of 158 yards. So 158 yards is what I would be adding to my yarn stash tag. So I went ahead and recorded that on my yarn stash tag here. And to really make this system work, it's good to have a yarn stash tracker. I can record the similar information on my yarn stash tracker. I'm just going to add a tag number to the bottom here. This is gonna be tag number one. And the benefit of logging this on a yarn stash tracker is that if I'm going to go ahead and make a pattern and I want to know what color yarn I have, what type of yarn I have, and how much of it I have, I can go to my yarn stash tracker, look at the yardage, and know right away if I have enough yarn before I go to my yarn storage and pull that ball of yarn out of storage. This yarn stash tracker can also be found on my resources page. So I really hope you like the system I have put together to keep my yarn storage nice and tangle free. I think the skein savers are cute and really do a great job in keeping the skeins nice and neat. If you like my system for keeping your yarn stash tangle free, make sure you subscribe and press the like button below. I share a lot of crochet tutorials, crochet stitches, crochet patterns, and more crochet tips. 